everybody. I hope you guys are all doing well and having a great day so far. Today I'm going to be talking about my routine for when my toddler and my baby are sick. I have a two-year-old and a five-and-a-half-month-old who is currently coming down with a cold and is sniffling and starting to cough and get a little bit congested. What I'm doing right here is starting to clean everything. This is normally what I do when one of us gets sick is I get everything together, I get the laundry together, I clean the kitchen and just the entire house just to make sure that the germs are limited. The next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this Johnson's Baby Soothing Vapor Bath and I'm going to be pouring it into the bathtub to create a nice bubble bath that both my baby and my toddler can take. This bubble bath soap is absolutely amazing. It helps to really decongest both Cora and Olivia. So I try to do multiple baths during the day when I do know that they are sick. This also helps to really soothe both of them. I find that they are more relaxed after they take this bath. I like to do multiple baths with the girls when they are sick because I've noticed it really helps Cora to relax. I usually have a washcloth, one for Cora and one for Olivia. And I put some of the soap on the washcloth and then gently wipe down her face, her neck, her hair, behind her ears, and just try to make sure that all of the germs are completely off and she is nice and clean. Wash her hands. It's important that all the germs are off and that she's not all sticky and icky. Olivia gets the same treatment. She gets her hair washed and her face washed and she gets the whole rubbed down as well. Bath time is definitely a time we can all enjoy together. Once the girls are done with their bath, I try to get them dressed and it could be a little bit hard because they like to roll around and do their own thing, but I try to put nice comfy clothes on each one of them. With Olivia, I make sure to put her in some clothing that can keep her cool. She does have febrile seizures, so I have to make sure that she does not get too warm and too toasty. So. I'm just going to put her in some shorts for now and a tank top and hopefully she will not get too warm. If she does begin to feel too hot, I can give her some children's ibuprofen. Here is some lotion that I'm just putting on her skin just to keep it nice and moisturized. I like to use the Aveeno Baby Lotion and I just put it on her legs. I usually put some on her feet and her arms and some on her face. I like to make sure that the babies are feeling nice and comfortable and I don't want any dry skin to bother them, especially when they aren't feeling very well. Next I use some children's chest rub and I'm not sure the brand on this one but it is made with natural ingredients and I like to put this on her chest and I usually grab some and I put some on both of her feet and rub them in. This is especially good for night times or right before naps. It helps to relax them. And Olivia seems to like to put this on herself more than anything and even hide the cap sometimes. That's okay. This chest rub is really good because it actually not only keeps them calm, it has a great scent of lavender and chamomile and even allows them to breathe. It's almost like Vicks vapor rub for us adults but it's made for children which is perfect. It is now Cora's time to get some lotion on her. I'm going to squirt some on Olivia's hand so she can help me out. I think she's going to put some on her face first and then she might help me rub Cora down but Cora gets the same treatment as well. She's going to get her legs and her feet nice and rubbed. We got to keep her skin baby soft. Cora also likes to try to grab her toes when I'm trying to put some lotion on her but I'm gonna put some on her arms and then there we go on her forehead and her face and sometimes behind her ears. Cora is also going to be getting the chest rub and I am making sure to not put it on Cora's feet and toes because as you can see she likes to put them in her mouth and I just think that would be really yucky if she got a taste of some lavender and chamomile. Cora likes to try to be a roly-poly when I try to get her dressed and put some chest rub on her. I'm going to go ahead and give my baby girl some mommy attention by giving her some kisses and 
treats and hugs and loving. I think when the girls are sick, I like to give them even extra kisses and hugs. I really do think that being in a positive mood helps heal the body. So I might as well pass that on to my girls. Here's Cora just looking all cute, just laying down, looking up at mommy and the camera. She looks like she's feeling okay. You guys can't hear her, but she does have some rattling. It sounds like it's coming from the back of her throat and some sniffles in her nose. So I'm going to have to take care of those shortly. It is time for Olivia to have a snack. So I am going to take out everything that I need to prepare the ultimate healthiest smoothie that I can for my little toddler. I have some frozen fruit with just some strawberries and blueberries that I had previously in the freezer. I have some yogurt. I just want to give her a little bit of probiotics to help out her stomach. And then I have some spinach that I'll be putting in there. This is a great way to hide some nutrition for your toddlers, especially if they aren't a fan of vegetables. And I'm using water instead of milk and so she can have some hydration for her. I like to make sure that she's well hydrated, especially when she's not feeling well. I throw in the rolled gluten-free oats just so she has some carbohydrates for energy. And I've also put some pineapple in there as well just for more sweetness so she's more than likely to drink it. This right here is a miracle worker and it's Kids Defense and it's elderberry syrup. And elderberry syrup helps with her immune system. Here is a packet, if the camera will focus, of children's vitamins. And this is how Olivia gets all of her vitamins for the day. I throw it in a smoothie and she gulps it down and she has no idea that I tricked her into total and complete healthiness. I put this into a nice sippy cup where she can drink it and, and not spill it anywhere, which is wonderful. Next, I'm going to be putting my essential oils into my diffuser. I absolutely love diffusing essential oils. If you are new to them, I would highly recommend checking them out. They're great as a natural healing remedy and I've found a very huge difference when I use this in my health and my children's health. You just have to put some water into the diffuser and then I'm going to be using two essential oils. One is this lavender essential oil and I find that this just completely calms the entire room and this is great for when my children need to take naps. The next essential oil that I'm going to be using in my diffuser is called peppermint. This will be great for Cora's and Olivia's nose when they are having some congestion and it also helps to soothe any irritants in your throat and I found that this actually helps me as well when my throat feels a little bit itchy or scratchy this really does the trick so I'm just putting the lid on here and then I'm gonna put the timer on I usually set it to about four hours at a time and this is enough to keep the entire room nice and scented along with going into the other rooms of our home I really like this diffuser and it's a really good added bonus that it comes with a different color lighting system. So if you wanted to use this at night in your children's bedroom, it works as a perfectly good night light as well because Olivia has suffered from nightmares and so having this extra lighting in her room really helps her sleep better. The diffuser really helps to establish a calmer environment for the girls. I've noticed that they are more at ease whenever I do have this on and running. Now that I've set a quieter tone for the bedroom, I try to limit the girls' activities when they aren't feeling well, and so I'm putting Cora down in her bed just so she can spend time and they're just relaxing. I think it's important to do minimal activities when they are sick, just so they can rest and so their immune system can really fight off whatever is bugging them at that time.
quiet time for Olivia usually means grabbing a book and sitting down and going through it. I really enjoy this time with her because it's not only one-on-one -on -one time, but it's another chance to get her to relax and not be so upbeat because we all know when we have a toddler, all they want to do is run around and I love just being able to grab a book lay down in her bed and go over it with her so I know that she's not being hyperactive and that she is getting the rest that she needs. Olivia is used to going outside to the park every single day and playing with her soccer ball and also is used to going outside our home and playing with her bubbles and now that it's summertime it's even more difficult to get her to just kind of stay put and stay inside instead of wanting to go outside. I know that she just really wants to go outside and run, but I'm trying to just keep her inside where she can relax. And the sooner she rests and relaxes, the sooner she can go outside again. And so having books on hand, I found is super helpful and handy. And if this doesn't work, then I can always just pop in a Disney movie for her to watch later. It is now time to make Olivia some lunch. When she's not feeling well, I like to try to make something that can comfort and soothe her. Today, I'm just gonna use one of the chicken noodle soups because I do not have just regular chicken broth on hand, so I'm gonna use this standard Campbell soup can. Next, I'm going to be putting some rice that I had already made previously in. This will help Olivia with the consistency when she goes to eat it with a spoon. It's a lot harder when she's just eating it with the noodles, so having the rice really helps. I'm adding some kale to the mix just so she has some greens and some vegetables to help boost her immune system. If you don't like kale, if your child doesn't like kale, you can also use broccoli. That's another one of Olivia's favorites. And also, if you find that the kale is just too much, and too big to handle, you can put the kale into a blender before adding it to the soup. So now I'm mixing the ingredients together just so they can all have the correct flavor on. And I will be adding some beef broth to the mixture because the more broth, the better. Broth is extremely good for you, especially when you're healthy. So I'm trying to add more nutrients to the mix here. I'm just going to stir all of these ingredients together and then I'm just going to let it come to a simmer and leave it there until the kale is completely cooked. You could usually notice when it's cooked when the leaves have darkened and have become smaller. When the kale is just about finished cooking, I add some turmeric powder. We all know this is my favorite and this is huge in anti-inflammatories. So this is a plus in my daughter's soup today to help her fight off whatever cold that she has currently. Now that the soup is finished on the stove, I'm going to pour it into the bowl just so it can cool down. This is the perfect soup for your family when anybody is sick because it's high in anti-inflammatories. It adds nutrition with the kale and carbohydrates with the rice and the noodles and the broth for added nutrition. While that is cooling, I am going to be giving Olivia some Pedialyte mixed with some water. She drinks this consistently throughout the day just to make sure that she is well hydrated and this is one of her favorites. If Olivia is just not having the Pedialyte that day and she just does not want to drink it, I make some lemon water just from using the cold water that I already have in the refrigerator, putting it into this water dispenser. It's so nice just to have a water dispenser like this because I can easily go and grab a cup of water and just dispense the water and constantly have it on hand for Olivia to stay hydrated. Once the entire gallon is full, I grab some lemons and I just like to chop them up 
and I put them in there. Lemons are really good for you, not only just when you're trying to be healthy and get get better when you're sick, but they're also good for you just overall for your metabolism to fight off bacteria. There's so many added benefits from lemons. And you could also put other ingredients in here as well. I like to put strawberries or mint. It's always yummy. If I feel as though Cora is getting a little bit warm, I like to take off the current clothing that she is having just so she can roam free in her diaper. Just by taking off the clothing that she's wearing, she has started to feel a lot cooler than what she was, and so that has been very good. And so I also like to put on some lavender on her skin because she is going to be going down for a nap soon, and so putting lavender on her skin also helps her to relax. There's Cora again. Right before nap time, I am just checking the humidifier to make sure that it has plenty of water for the girls for when they go down. Humidifiers are great because it moistens the air and it unclogs any congestion that they may have in their little noses and in their throats. While the girls nap, I take advantage of this time and I try to straighten up the house and continue to clean again when the girls are sick or if anybody in our family is sick. I try to clean even more, if not constantly, to try to just get rid of all of the germs in the house so nothing spreads. I am using chemical-free disinfectant wipes to just rub down the eating area and the entire table and Olivia's seating area. Once the girls have woken up from their nap, I begin bringing Cora's chair into the bathroom. This is where I will be setting up the room just to steam the entire bathroom. Steam really helps unclog Cora's nose. I find that when we sit in there for about 10 minutes, it helps to really unclog all of her little airways and she's able to either sneeze or cough up whatever mucus that she needs to. She of course gets 10 full minutes of mommy and me time. So of course that's an added bonus. I make sure to steam up the room fairly well. I want to make sure that the steam is actually reaching Cora and that she inhales a pretty good amount of the steam just so it can unblock any of her clogged airways. This is great to do in between bath times. Next I will be using the Nose Frida and Saline Mist to be sucking out the boogers of Cora's nose. This thing looks really gross, but I promise you if you're a parent with a baby, you will absolutely need it. I also use it on Olivia too. It's time to give Cora a bottle when she is not feeling well and she is sick. I like to feed her almost consistently, so instead of feeding her every two hours, I feed her every almost every hour. I just give her a smaller ounce bottle in the in-between mark of the one hour and the two hour. Sometimes Olivia likes to come and help out as well. She not only is one of the best daughters that I have, but she is also an awesome big sister. And even though she hasn't felt well herself, she really enjoys helping out with Cora and checking up on her to make sure that she's okay. And I love that she's just so protective of her little sister already. That just about wraps it up for my sick baby and toddler routine. You guys got a glimpse into what I do when both of them are not feeling well. It's basically the same repetitive routine over and over until they start to feel better. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I know it's not easy being a mom and having to take care of your little ones when they are sick. 
If you're interested in a morning and a night routine with Cora and Olivia, then please like this video for love. And if you have not already, please subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications so you are notified when the next video is uploaded. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day and I appreciate you guys for tuning in and I will be talking to you guys soon. Bye!